Today, I'm gonna to show you how I shoot and edit HDR content using Sony HLG. We'll cover my entire workflow, from shooting, editing, to color correcting, to exporting. What's up and welcome to my channel. My name is EJ and I'm a content creator covering everything from cameras, video editing, lifestyle, fitness, and more. Before we jump into today's topic, please click the subscribe button so you can support the channel and stay up to date with new content that I drop. Let's jump right in. There are two methods of displaying video content, SDR and HDR. SDR stands for Standard Dynamic Range and it's the viewing experience you see when you're watching content on Instagram or most regular TV broadcasts. The leg up from that is HDR, High Dynamic Range, a more advanced display technology that offers a wider range of brightness levels, more vibrant colors, and greater contrast. Today, many devices and platforms support HDR content. Smartphones, laptops, TVs, computers, and gaming monitors and more. An example is if you're watching this YouTube video on your iPhone, you're probably watching it in HDR. Let's talk about HLG. HLG stands for Hybrid Log Gamma. It's one of the many picture profiles offered on Sony cameras designed to capture a wide dynamic range and more vibrant colors, making it ideal for HDR content. There's three different types of HLG. HLG1 is for brighter environments, HLG3 is for lower light environments, and HLG2 is a balance of both. Why would you want to shoot with HLG? You want to shoot with HLG if you want to deliver HDR content, if you want a simpler shooting experience with less variables to manage, if you want a simpler post-processing experience in terms of coloring, or your camera isn't 10-bit, so it's not ideal to shoot in a picture profile like S-Log. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to S-Log versus HLG, but today we'll keep it to the point and just talk about HLG specifically, but if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. On to my camera setup. I'm using a Sony a7 III. And one of the reasons I'm using HLG is because my camera only shoots an 8-bit. The HLG picture profile that I'm using is HLG2. And here's how you set it up. Access your camera's menu. On the first tab, which is quality image size 1, navigate to the page that has picture profile. For me, this is on the color white balance image processing menu, which is page 12. Scroll down to picture profile and select it. For HLG, set this to PP10. Then click right to access the picture profile details. Let's change a couple things. For gamma, select your HLG type. I'm using HLG2. Earlier I mentioned that there's three HLG types, but you can see four here. But if you're gonna use HLG, you might as well just use HLG2. Scroll down to color space and set this to BT2020, which is suitable for HDR. Adjust saturation to minus one to have more control over color in post. Then scroll down to detail and change this to minus seven. You can add sharpening in post-production. Then click menu a few times to go back to your color white balance image processing page. Keep pressing forward until you go to the next tab, which is movie one. Go to the page that has your zebra setting. This is page six for me. Select zebra setting, turn zebra display to on, and change your zebra level to 95. Zebras help identify areas that are too bright and at risk of clipping. When shooting in HLG, aim to use your camera's base ISO for HLG. For the a7 III, it's ISO 125 but adjust to your needs accordingly. For exposure, you can expose to the right, keeping your exposure between zero and plus one. Adjust your white balance based on your lighting conditions. And you can use an ND filter to have maximum control of your environment. Next, we're gonna jump into how I edit the HDR content. What you're going to need first is an HDR monitor. You can't use a non-HDR monitor to edit HDR content because it can't accurately display the extended dynamic range and vibrant colors. This is going to lead to incorrect adjustments and grading. My setup in particular is a MacBook Pro that has a non-HDR display, but it's connected to my Aorus F048U HDR monitor. I'm directly editing off the HDR display, so I don't need to purchase the digital converter. You can use any of the popular NLEs, but today I'm gonna to show you how to edit in Final Cut Pro. First thing we're gonna do is update our library from SDR to HDR. So you can see here that my library is in standard gamut SDR, I'll click Modify and change this to Wide Gamut HDR. You could keep it at SDR and change this later, but this is just going to save you an extra step down the line. And then from there, we're going to create a new project. Let's just give it a name. Call it HDR, HLG. We'll use 4K, 24P, I like using Apple ProRes 422HQ, even though I don't have a 10-bit camera. For color space, we'll use Wide Gamut HDR Rec 2020 HLG. Then I'll click OK to create the project. Next, we'll grab our clip and drag it into the timeline. You can see here that the clip looks decent. 
it's not as washed out as it would on Rec. 709 because the video was shot in 2020 and the project is set to 2020 as well. I don't have to change any of the color space settings. Now, if your HL 2020 footage ever looks blown out in a 2020 project due to Final Cut Pro maybe not reading the file correctly, one thing you can do is apply a color space override. You can change this to Rec. 2020 and that should fix it. This looks okay for now, so just leave it as it is. Let's go ahead and start correcting the colors of this video. Before I do any edits to this clip, I want to set up my workspace so that I'm no longer in editing mode, but rather in coloring mode. Final Cut Pro has an awesome easy workspace to visualize just the tools that you need for coloring. Click on Window, click on Workspaces, and then click on Color and Effects. Now you can see that my panel has changed to a coloring workspace where I can see things like vector scopes or RGB graphs. I don't use all of these, so what I'll do instead is change the layout to a double stacked view. So I just am seeing the Luma and vector scopes. When making changes, I like to use adjustment layers. So I can click on the grid to see my media library. I can click over here to see my adjustment layers. And I can drag this above the clip in the timeline. And it's a layer that I can directly apply changes to. This helps me keep the clip untouched and all of my changes within one place. This also allows me to drag the adjustment layer over top of any of the other clips in the timeline. For now, we'll just chop this and have it directly over top of our single clip. I'll leave a link to the adjustment layers in the description below. So next, we'll do our color correcting. I'll click on the adjustment layer and first I'll add a color wheel so that we can adjust the shadows, midtones, and highlights. We don't need the media library anymore. And we'll use the Luma scope as our reference. First, we'll try and adjust the shadows down between 25 and zero. For highlights, I try and raise this between 75 and 100. And for midtones, I try to keep it between 25 and 75. You can see here that my goal is to adjust the Luma so that I'm not introducing too much noise or clipping and balancing the exposure so that my image looks better. You can also use the color wheels to adjust saturation. You can adjust saturation on each individual wheel or you can apply it globally and it will saturate all three evenly. Now on the left, the vector scope, this can help you identify skin tones. This solid line right here, this is called the line of skin tones. Everybody has different skin tones though, so maybe this is not the end-all be-all line, but you can use it as a reference point if you need to. So here you can see if I'm changing my midtones, the colors will move away from that solid line. There's a lot more things you can do in terms of making your image have your preferred look, but to condense this video, we're going to save that rabbit hole for another day. I think we've achieved a baseline of our goal of adding some color back into our video. Next up is exporting. So exporting is super key because we just did all of this work and now we want to export and upload the best content as possible. For exporting, I use Compressor. Compressor came with my Final Cut Pro license and it makes exporting and uploading really fast. So we'll open up our media library again. We'll click on our project and then we'll click File send to compressor, and then new batch. The codec I'm going to use is Apple Devices 4K, HEVC 10-bit. We'll click here and drag it over top of our file. Then we want to click start batch. Once this is finished, it's going to export into the folder that you've predetermined. Give it some time depending on how large your video is, and you'll have an HDR content video that'll be ready to upload to YouTube or view on any HDR platform of your choice. All right, our file finished exporting, so I'll just show you what it looks like as our end result. Let's end today's video with some extra keynotes. Everything we did today was for HDR, and this won't work well for platforms like Instagram who don't support HDR. Instagram will automatically convert your HDR into SDR, but you'll probably run into a loss of dynamic range and a shift in your colors. The workaround is editing in a Rec. 709 color space. If you want to see my workflow for that, let me know in the comments below and I'll drop another video on how to do so. 
That's it for today. Again, thank you so much for visiting my channel. I hope you got a lot of benefit from this video. Please support the channel by hitting like and subscribe and follow me on social media to get more content daily. Peace.